If you've ever played a Rockstar title, I don't need to tell you that the sound has always been amazing. From the music to the character voices to all the sound effects in between. This also has to be the only game ever that has better voice acting than the movie it's portraying. Plenty of solid voice actors lend their talents to this game, including characters from the original movie, such as Dorsey Wright as Cleon, and Deborah Valkenberg as Mercy. It also helps to know that some of the corny lines from the movie actually sound good in the game. And yes, I realize there's a lot of swearing, but the movie was like that too. Part of the reason why Rockstar is so cool is how they choose the right songs for the right games. And this game is no exception. It comes with a complete list of Barry Devorzan hits, such as the Baseball Furious Chase and the theme to the Warriors. We're going in there with nothing. We're going in there like everyone else. Nine guys, no weapons. And almost every song from the movie makes an appearance in the game. Like Nowhere to Run, Last of an Ancient Breed, and of course In the City. And just like in Vice City, Rockstar has a whole list of songs that are applicable to the time. From smooth disco tunes to local rap flavor to the heaviest, most disturbing punk metal on the planet. Another cool thing Rockstar got right was the lingo. Check this out. You know now watch the scene and tell me yeah, if you can understand what the guy is saying yeah, without the more. translations. the gate I just opened over there, the others in the mechanics bay below us. Yo, Rembrandt! You guys better book! That radio you busted was a straight link to the local prison. Okay, the cops think there's trouble, and they're coming here now. I'm splitting. Good luck, boys. Thanks for the warning, man. That's it. The contest is finished. The best writer showed he ain't no toy, and he do not mess around. All the this wasn't entirely the necessary, but sure does add to the feel of the game. As usual, the control is pretty straightforward and clear-cut. Since this game is basically a beat em up, learning how to fight is essential for game completion. I'll shove that bat up your ass and turn you into a popsicle. There's really not much to it. Just stay alert, get creative, and inflict as much damage as you possibly can. The first stage gives you a rundown of all the attacks, so it's pretty easy to pick up. Do enough damage over time, and you'll go into rage mode. This is where you can start doing execution moves. Wormrat's moves aren't very violent, but Swans definitely are. Other things you have to master over time are stealing car radios, which is basically just spinning the analog stick. Mugging people, which is just finding the vibration on the controller. What do you got for me? You put me on, right? Man, I'm all right. I'm finished. In your face, toy. And quickly maneuvering around the city. If you hit triangle at the right time, you'll quickly go over a gate or a wall. But if you wait too long, you're gonna go over it slowly. It's all about momentum. Later you'll have to learn how to sneak around and do stealth kills. Uncuff fellow warriors by gnashing their shoulder buttons. Pick locks by lining up all the tumblers so he can perform smash and grabs. And probably the most popular, tagging up your turf by following an outline. The only difficult on, part about the controls is issuing commands. Warrior. It's annoying as hell. Let's move it. Okay, okay, let's move then. Let's move. Well, I think it's about high time I get into the gameplay. Like I said before, this let's is a beat em up. Beat so, what you basically do is fight. <laughs> Don't forget to incorporate team moves. Then you go tag some turf. Then you go fight some more. Oh, 
this side! Now maybe you understand. You fuck with the warriors, you're gonna get burned. Here you go! Cause some destruction. Tear these fuckers then more fighting. Then you get to play some chase scenes, which are actually pretty exciting. Well, the button mashers not so much, but the ones we get to run are actually really cool. And many of them are taken right from the movie. Who doesn't remember the Baseball Furies chase? Or this chase with the turnball ACs and the bus? Wait a minute. What is that guy doing? Why is he just swinging a club on the side of the bus? Is he really doing anything in the process? Y you know, never mind, this just kind of annoys me. Anyway, probably the most exciting chasing is on the roofs of Soho when you're being chased by the hi-hats. That reminds me, this game lets you kick the shit out of mimes. Now who didn't want to do that? Then at the end of most stages you get to do a boss fight, which isn't usually that hard if you have the right strategy. If you grow tired of the main storyline, you can check out Rumble Mode. It is pretty cool because it lets you set up your own battles and create your own gangs. You get your basic one-on-one, five-on-five, and my personal favorite, the nine-on-nine. There are other games that are kind of hard to comment on, like King of the Hill. I just find it really annoying, especially with the voices. Now I'm the goddamn war chief! Now I'm the goddamn war chief! I'm I'm gonna the right the I'm the There's a racing stage where you get to have two guys in wheelchairs duke it out. And a really weird capture flag game where you gotta toss Mercy around. Finally, there's a survival mode and a battle royale, which basically just takes place on a rooftop. And after you beat the game, you get to unlock a sweet double dragon clone. Instead of Billy and Jimmy, it's Ajax and Swan. Okay, okay, this is kind of stupid, but it's amusing nonetheless.